Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our midweek Bible study. I pray that you are remaining safe and healthy. I want to encourage you to continue to practice uh, good, safe guidelines. Continue to pray for our church, for our community, and for our country. Uh, and stay in prayer for our seven days through tonight at 7 p.m. Tonight, I want to briefly talk about faith under fire. I want to use the familiar story of Joseph, background Genesis chapter 37 through chapter 50. I want to read one verse, Genesis 50, 20. 50, 20 of the book of Genesis, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Many of us are familiar with the story of Joseph who had a lot of things going for him at first in life. He's handsome. He's the firstborn son of Jacob and Rachel. At the age of 17, he has two dreams. He's loved by his father. He has these dreams and become despised by his brothers. Yet God uses him. If we were to summarize his life, we would say that he went from being his dad's favorite to a pit. He's thrown in the pit by his brothers. They take him out of the pit. He ends up being sold in to slavery in Egypt, he ends up in the king's palace. In the king's palace, he is lied on, he ends up in prison, but ultimately he ends up being promoted to the governor, so to speak, of Egypt. There are some things that we can learn, life lessons that we can learn by looking at Joseph and how he responded when his faith came under fire. The first thing that we note is that God breaks him in order to make him. God takes him out of his comfort zone, take him out of his comfortable environment or allows him to be taken out of his environment. And he ends up being thrown in a pit, yet his brothers decide not to leave him there, get him out, sell him, and he ends up being uh, in the king's palace. Even in the king's palace, uh, he finds favor. Genesis 39, 2 states that everything that Joseph done, the Lord prospered. While he is there, he is lied on. He is falsely accused. But even in the midst of that, Joseph maintains his integrity and remains faithful to God whether he was prosperous or whether he was in adversity, Joseph maintained his integrity. It's a powerful lesson in that for us on how we should respond in our time of adversity. Because of his false accusations against him, he ends up <clears throat> being put in prison. But even in prison, Genesis 39, 23 said that even there, the Lord prospered him and the Lord was with him in everything that he done. There is no mistake in where God places us or allows us to be. The lesson there is that wherever we are, we need to allow God to use us. It would be some years later, actually it would be about 13 years from the time of his dream before he is promoted in the land of Egypt. Uh, Genesis 41, 46, he is 30 years old. And because of his God-given gift of being able to interpret a dream of the Pharaoh, he ends up being promoted to governor of Egypt. And although there is a seeming delay between 17 years old and 30 years old, God is molding him and God is making him and God is preparing him for what God has in store. Just always remember that many times there is a delay before we see God working through us. We also have to understand that Joseph's life teaches us that disappointments 
are a part and they are vital to spiritual growth because it means that we have to maintain our faith and we have to place all of our hope upon God. Delay does not hinder God's purpose, it has been said. It only polishes his instrument. One of the other things that we learn about Joseph's life when we look at it is that God is in control even when our world is spinning out of control. Joseph is thrown in the pit, as I said. He ends up in the palace, ends up in prison, but ultimately he is promoted. And there are times when I'm sure that he didn't understand what was going on. We won't understand what is going on and why, but what some might mean for evil, God will turn it around for good. And we also have to remember that God uses other people's negative motives in order to bring about his perfect will and purpose. That is Joseph's statement in Genesis 50, 20. His brothers intended their actions for evil, but God intended it for good. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through, but know that when your faith comes under fire, maintain your integrity. God is in control and what some have intended for evil, God will turn it into good. May God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer. How do you respond when your faith is under fire? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the life of Joseph and for what we can learn from his life. Thank you for what you are allowing us to go through. We thank you for who you are, for what you're doing and for what you're going to do. Remember our church, our community and our country, pray for our leaders all over the world. Be with our first responders, law enforcement, and our medical personnel and other essential and frontline workers and keep them safe and out of harm's way. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen.